almost there. This must be it. Finally, I can complete the mission. Oh. <laughs> oh. Mighty dragon, can you tell me what is the secret of the rivers? Always with you, what cannot be done. What do you say? I must follow the path of the river to find how erosion works and sedimentation. Do or do not. There is no try. All right then, as you please. Thank you, wise dragon of the west. <laughs> yes. I shall leave now. All right, <laughs> that's enough. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Welcome everyone. Welcome to my explanation of uh, the river and its erosion and sedimentation and how deltas form and all that good stuff. Yes, you got that on the screen. And yeah, I built it in Minecraft so you could relate to it a bit more. Um, so we're just gonna go step by step. We're gonna start with this part here um, and then we're gonna move over to this bit here. And in the end, we shall end over there in the ocean. And that's where our journey almost ends. Please go out of my water. Thank you. All right, let's just start with the explanation and we'll see where it goes. All right, so as you can see, oh, so as you can see, I'm on top of the mountain right now. And on the top side of the mountain, this is where the river starts. You can see here, I built an amazing glacier. It is kind of melting. That's why the river is flowing. Also because of the precipitation or rainfall or snowfall. However, it falls down. The precipitation, it will cause the water to run down. Let's put this here. This is what we call the upper course of the river. So right now we are at the upper course of the river. First of all, they're on top of the mountains. They're high up in the mountains. The upper course is where a river starts and it will flow downhill off the mountains. And usually that happens when a glacier is melting or the precipitation or snowfall or rainfall causes the water to form a river and flow down. The upper course is also a very steep part of the river. And because it's steep, it has a very big slope. It goes from all the way up there, all the way down there, very steep. The flow of the water is real fast. So the water has a lot of power. So if we write that down next to the upper course, um, there you go. So the upper course, uh, top, uh, in the upper course, you will find that it is always in the mountains. That it is very steep and the water flow is very strong. The river, it flows is really strong. Think of it as a slide. When you go down a slide in real life, the top part, which is very steep, you will go very fast and so does the water. We follow the water downstream. There we go. It starts raining again. So now we have exited the upper course and we have come to a place where you can actually walk a bit better. It's not high up in the mountains, but it's still not close to the ocean and it still cuts inside the oh spooky noises and it cuts inside the land shape this part is what we call the middle course you have the river plains usually some hills are around it and the river flow uh the, the flow is medium let's say medium it's not fast but it's also not super slow <gasps> wait what Okay, wait a second. <gasps> yes. Hey, buddy. Yeah, we got a friend. That went fast. Name tag. Yeah. Franz. You have now been uh, named Franz. There you go. So back, <laughs> back to the explaining part. The middle course is happening in the hillside. It's between the big mountains and the uh, plains. And the flow is a bit medium. It still flows, but it is not as powerful as up in the mountains. 
okay, Franz is doing his thing. And then when we follow the stream even more downwards, we will eventually arrive in the lower course. If we have to recognize this in any way, it is usually uh, really flat. That's not how you type flat. It's usually really flat. The water, the water flow is slow. Uh, well, let's say water is slow and we can say it's near the coast. The lower coast is always close to the ocean and it is where the river eventually... Okay, the river eventually goes into the ocean. All right, yes, there you go. So you sit here on the lower plains, please. Lower course. Okay. So that is, in short, the upper course, the middle course, and the lower course. So now we know that the river has three courses, the upper, the middle, and the lower course. But what has this to do with words such as erosion and sedimentation? Well, to understand what this all means, we first have to read what's going on here. We have to look at exogenic forces, such as weathering and erosion. These are forces from outside the earth that reshape the way the landscape looks. All right, so what is it? Well, weathering is the breaking down of rock due to weather and flora, and erosion is the continued wearing down of land due to one of the moving agents, also known as wind, water, and ice. The big difference is that weathering happens due to the difference in weather and due to plants, and erosion always happens with water, wind, and ice, which is moving. So the water in a river that's flowing, a glacier that is moving, or the wind that is blowing. And all this causes sedimentation, a process by which grains come to rest in one place. Or grains, you can also say pieces of stone. For example, in the upper course of a river, a piece of stone due to weathering has been broken off and falls into the river. The river in the upper course is very strong. The movement of the water has a lot of power and it is very steep. This power of the river causes the movement of the weathered rocks. The weathered rocks will move downstream. Eventually though, the power of the river will go down a little bit and the biggest rock cannot be carried away by the river anymore. So the biggest rock will be put inside the river. It will be sedimented. It, the river will not be strong enough to carry the rock anymore and thus sedimentation will happen in the upper course. The biggest rocks will be sedimented in the upper course. But by scraping the bottom of the river floor, the rocks will also cause erosion due to water, wind or ice, and in this case the water. The erosion will slowly carve out the river on the bottom and create a more deeper river. It will cut itself into the mountain. All right, so in one way, the erosion causes the river to go deeper and the sedimentation will cause the bigger rocks to stay behind. The smaller rocks will be still be able to be carried away downstream and eventually reach the middle course. When we leave the upper course and we enter the middle course, the power of the river will have gone down. So the sedimentation of the biggest rocks would have already happened in the upper course. But still, there are some bigger rocks such as this one. Sedimentation of these somewhat bigger rocks will happen upwards in the middle course. The power of the river is still strong enough to carry them all the way over here, but eventually the power of the river will not be strong enough to carry them anymore and they will fall down to the bottom of the floor of the river. But also still erosion is taking place. So the power of the water will still be able to cut down the river a little bit and thus creating a valley. Further down the middle course, we will find ourselves with even smaller pieces of stone. The river has already weakened so much that even the bigger rocks can't be carried anymore, and you will end up with some smaller rocks. But we're still not at the end of the river. Even in the middle course, there will be sedimentation of these smaller stones. The sedimentation of the gravel will happen around this time. 
If we go more downstream into the lower course, we will find that the river has lost almost all its power and that even the smallest pieces of rock, such as sand and clay, will fall down to the bottom and create the river banks. So to summarize this process, when the water flow is at its strongest, it will only have sedimentation of bigger rocks and when the power of the river goes down, the sedimentation will get smaller and smaller and eventually only sand and clay remain. But there is more! After a while, when the river ends inside the ocean, there might be still a lot of sand and sediment left. When the ocean current is not too strong, the sedimentation can expand in towards the sea and thus creating more land. This new land that has been formed is what we call a delta. A delta is new land that is formed in the sea by sedimentation at the mouth of a river into the sea. So if the current of the ocean isn't too strong and there is enough sand in this sedimentation pod, it might actually build up and create new land. And eventually, after millions of years, the whole mountain will be eroded or weathered away and it will have created new land. But not all rivers end in a delta. Sometimes the sea current is too strong and it will take away all the sand. The sand will travel through the sea and eventually when there is a low current, so when the sea is not strong enough, it might actually pile up in another place. So the sediment, also the sand, will have traveled through the ocean and eventually will find a place where the current isn't so strong. The sand will eventually fall down at the bottom of the ocean where it is not as strong and a sandbank is formed. So this is what we call a sandbank, a shallow area in the sea. So the sand piles up and creates a sandbank. Above and under the water there will be a lot of sand. And after a long enough time the sandbank will have changed into a beach because of all the sand that has been transported from another place to this place where the water of the ocean, the current of the ocean is not as strong so the sand can actually settle down or sedimentation of sand will happen and a new beach is formed and the beach is of course the border does it fit the border between land and water so what we learned in this video is that there is an upper course a middle course and a lower course that in each of these courses sedimentation and erosion happens with different types of strength and eventually there might form a delta and if not the sand might go somewhere else and create a beach in another place. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.